Vinny Del Negro uh, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Report, an analyst currently for Bleach Report, former coach of the Clippers and Bulls here on the Rich Eisen Show. Vinny, thanks for calling in. Appreciate it. No problem, Rich. Good to talk to you. You bet. So what do you think when you hear David Blatt say he didn't veto it, he just was strongly suggesting something else? What do you think about that? Well, I mean, coaches have to make a ton of decisions throughout the game, but obviously uh, everything's going to be scrutinized. You know, uh, you know, J.R. Smith had a good fourth quarter. There's decisions that have to be made, but obviously you're going to try to get the ball in your, your best player's hands, and LeBron felt strongly. I think that his teammates felt strongly that he needed to get the basketball, and it worked out well for Cleveland, so they can move on from it. But, um, you know, things happen, and, uh, you know, I, I think it's always best just to come out and say, hey, you know, uh, Le- LeBron wanted to run this, and he made it work, and that's his job as a superstar player. So, um, you know, there's a lot of different stories, what's actually true or what actually happens in the huddle, only they know, but the way it's been perceived, obviously, uh, says that, you know, there was another play called, and LeBron said, hey, forget about that play right now. We're going to get the ball to me, and we're going to either win the game or we're going into overtime. Well, you know, and, and LeBron's saying that people are only on it because he's coaching LeBron, um, which is true. I mean, it's it's not – it's LeBron should get the last shot. The, the only issue is is that here's a guy who's never been through the NBA playoffs before, never been an NBA coach before going through this. We just saw moments before he was about to call a timeout he didn't have, and now he's drawn up a play that LeBron scratched, and we have to wonder if he's really up to the task. Is that a fair question to ask right now, Vinny? Well, it's always a fair question because you're talking about a guy that is his first time coaching in the NBA, and you're going to be scrutinized up and down, and that's just part of it. But, you know, let's just say, you know, a play was drawn up, and J.R. Smith, who had 11 points in the fourth quarter, knocks down a winning shot. Um, everyone's like, oh, what a great call. I mean, the easy play is always to, hey, give the ball to LeBron, give the ball to your best player. Um, but, you know, sometimes it works, it doesn't. Let's just say, you know, a, a Hall of Fame coach like Greg Popovich called a play and Danny Green knocks a three-pointer down and the ball doesn't go to Duncan or Parker, who were having great games, but it was the execution of the play. Nothing would be said, but that's a guy that's won five championships. You know, David Blatt has just get into the NBA and he's been blessed with a great team and having coached the best player in the world right now. They've had to have a lot of adversity and they miss Kevin Love tremendously, but they got a big road win. They got to kind of control the noise. They got to control what's in that locker room. I think LeBron handled it fine in terms of, hey, you know, we're learning every day. We're getting better. We're getting closer every day. And we're going to build off this. And his whole mindset is let's find a way to win game five and, and get up in this series finally. So they have to concentrate on what they can control. And that's their preparation for, for uh, game five. NBA TV and Bleacher Report analyst, former coach of the. Uh, Bulls and Clippers, Vinny Del Negro joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. So, you know, word has it that you were in a huddle with Chris Paul in Los Angeles, and Paul did essentially what LeBron did to you. Is that Did that happen to you, Coach, with Chris? Uh, I mean, it always. there's always discussions. I wouldn't say anything happened. I wouldn't put anything ever on the player. You have to make decisions as a coach. Um, but sometimes, you know, players have a great feel for what's going on out there as well. Um, you know, I had options. Obviously, I had Blake and Chris. I had two superstar guys that I could go to, so that was an advantage. But always you want to try to get the ball in your best player's hand. So, uh, you know, whether Jamal Crawford was going, you know, but Chris is not only going to make uh, – can make the shot, he's going to make the right play, and that makes him such a great player. You know, it's not always about the shot. It's about making the right play. And, and uh, when you have guys like that, things are going to happen in heated moments. There's emotions involved. There's quick decisions that have to be involved, and you always want to get that ball to your best player. So um, there, there's never an easy answer to it. If the shot goes in and you win the game, you call the right play. If it doesn't, you got to be able to handle the heat. That comes with the territory. Yeah, but what about your authority? I mean, every coach that I know is a control freak, and 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 authority is it, it's got to start with that and the respect uh, of of having it from your players, and to have a play that you've drawn up essentially not run or a, co- a player basically say, we're not doing that. D- is that something no that... No question. There, there's always authority. There always is a trust factor, respect factor, and you build that over time. It doesn't happen overnight, and you have to have a chain of command totally. But sometimes you always have to be flexible, too, in terms of listening to coaches, um, listening to other coaches, but also listening to 
uh, the feel of the game, your best players out there. If you draw up a play and you want to run it, then you demand to do it. That's what you want to run. That's what they're going to run. So it just comes with it. But, you know, you might have an idea and you might discuss it with your assistants. You might discuss it in the huddle. And all of a sudden, guys might have a feel for something. But it's not a matter of not authority. It's a matter of what's best for the team at that particular moment. Um, and authority is definitely important, but trust and building that responsibility and trust throughout, uh, you know, a relationship is very important too. Do you ever wonder, Coach, what it would have been like for you to coach Paul and Blake Griffin without Donald Sterling being around in the current environment that the Clippers have right now? Do you ever sit there in a quiet moment, wish you had that opportunity? Uh, I mean, you know, I don't. I was very fortunate. Obviously, you know, sometimes life isn't fair; things happen, um, but. You know, I think, uh, you know, my record and what we did in Los Angeles while I was there speaks for itself. And I wish I could have finished the job, but it wasn't meant to be. And, uh, you know, Mr. Sterling gave me an opportunity to coach the team for a few years. I put that organization in a very good footing and in very good position. And uh, I'll leave it at that. Coach Del Negro uh, here on the Rich Eisen Show. You drafted Derek Rose. What do you think of uh, his chances over the final three games here? Uh, if necessary, in this series that has the pivotal Game 5 tonight in Cleveland? Well, obviously, Derek is, is playing fantastic. Just a great to see him out there playing, being aggressive. Um, you know, he's had such a misfortune with all these injuries he's had, so to get him out there playing at a high level is great. Big loss with Paul Gasol out there. That was one of their advantages in the front court in terms of his scoring, his length, his rim protection. So that obviously hurts them tremendously. Um, you know, Chicago had their chances the other day to give Cleveland credit, but that's what makes the playoffs great. Now guys have to step up in game five, try to get it. Uh, obviously Cleveland doesn't want to go back down three, two back to Chicago for a closeout game. They're going to try to take advantage of the series, uh, in game five, but Derek has been fantastic. They just have to get more production, from more guys, um, and see if they can control, you know, any easy baskets Cleveland gets is a bonus for them. Make them shoot over the top, contested jump shots, and get some easy ones themselves. Lastly, the DeAndre Jordan hacking that we're seeing right now, 28 first-half attempts. That was a record uh, last game that they played with the Rockets. It was flat-out unwatchable for a fan. Yeah. And, you know, Greg Popovich, who you mentioned earlier, essentially says, look, if there's somebody that can't shoot free throws, uh, I'm willing not to foul him as long as you're willing not to block any of my shots. I mean, that it's something that, <laughs> that, that, that should be available to a coach. Where do you stand on this whole issue and, and whether the NBA should change something to do with it? Well, there's going to be some changes. Uh, I don't think you can reward a guy for not being a good free throw shooter and, and just build rules around to protect him. But I also think that, like you said, it is absolutely no fun to watch. Um, it's not fair to the integrity of the game. People want to see the great players be creative, spacing, ball movement, just good basketball. So if people start turning the channel off, obviously that's going to change a little quicker. But there's got to be some adjustments. Um, you know, there's going to be an article coming out in Bleacher Report I just did on it, but various ways to maybe take advantage of it. Maybe there's a happy medium where you, you know, protect the players from some standpoint, but you also protect the fans and you protect the game. So, you know, you can turn it on and you don't have to see 100 free throws in a game or 28 and a half from bad free throw shooters and slow the flow of the game down. Just no fun to watch. But uh, coaches are going to use it as a strategy because the statistics prove from a possession standpoint and from a number standpoint, um, it can affect your team in a positive way. Who wins it all when it's all said and done, Vinny? Well, I think big win by Golden State last night. You'd have to say it's going to be Golden State and the Clippers, and that I think that's a toss-up. Golden State has home court, but I think the Clippers have played as well as anybody in the playoffs if Chris can stay healthy with his hamstring. Um, and then, obviously, Cleveland took a big step forward, now home court advantage. I expect Cleveland uh, to get by now with home court, and you'd have to say, I can't pick one. I, Golden State has home court, but obviously the Clippers have to keep Chris healthy. If Chris can stay healthy, they went to a Game 7 last year, uh, even though it was in L.A., this year it's going to be in Golden State. If they get to it, you'd have to say favors the Warriors and obviously Cleveland right now. Thanks for calling in, Vinny. Anytime, Appreciate it. Rich. Good to talk to you. Look forward to the next time already. Vinny Del Negro, uh, NBA TV and Bleacher Report. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.